Baby is so tired. Oh. Hey guys, it's Saturday. It's actually 4th of July, so happy 4th of July. Even though 4th of July will be totally over by the time this video comes out. I'm all dressed up. I got my makeup done and I'm wearing this little house on the prairie dress that I actually really, really love, but I would not be wearing it today but I am finishing up a video that I started yesterday. I'm doing like a whole jewelry favorites video. All my jewelry is upstairs. That's why I'm not wearing very much right now. Um, but I need to do my close-ups, and this is what I was wearing yesterday. So got to do that. But first, I need to start the marinade for the fajitas that we want to make tonight. We're actually going to grill some fajitas. And over the week, or I think it was last Monday, I put this on my story. It was definitely not a question for everyone, but for Texans at least, if you've had Lupe Tortilla, there are a ton of locations in Houston. Uh, but in Dallas, there's only a couple of locations, and they're all in the super north suburbs, and we don't live anywhere close to there. And I was just really, really in the mood to have Lupe beef fajitas it's a very specific flavor it's very limey like honestly i can't even describe everything going on but lime is the major flavor that comes out and i've really never had fajitas that taste like those before and they're just so good so i was asking for suggestions like best fajitas in dallas and we ended up getting a pretty good suggestion but did they really compare to lupe I have to say no. But I did end up getting a recommendation for a recipe for marinade that is really, really similar to that flavor of the Lupe beef fajitas. Like probably no one knows what I'm talking about right now, but we're gonna try it today and I'll let you know if it's similar. If you've never had it before, maybe you can try the marinade and you can know what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna get started on that, shoot the rest of my video, and then we can have 4th of July at home. All right, I got Grant over here on meat detail. Meat detail. <laughs> the meat man. He said, do you want me to tenderize it and then we can really make it like Lupe? And I was like, why are you even asking me this question? Get to work. So this is a 48 blade meat tenderizer. Whoa. 48 knives on the end. So. Hello. This is how you really get meat tenderized. And so if you go to, if you've ever been to Lupe Tortilla, Kind of looks like they put it through some type of machine and they probably have a different one but this is here they probably have someone in the back chewing it up for yeah. you well they have a machine that they run it through oh, okay. so this is uh, your at-home version so and we have a lot of meat to work through yeah. so i think i'm going to double the recipe of marinade to actually yeah. cover it all all right i've got all my ingredients out grant got the meat ready to go and i just need to call attention to the size of this jug of minced garlic this is what happens when grant goes to costco <laughs> we've got minced garlic for the rest of our lives love is love love is love I I'm all done with the marinade. The meat is in the refrigerator and I was just cleaning up the mess that I made. And I don't know how many limes I did, maybe like three. And I've actually done this before where you can put either lemon or lime rinds down the disposal and kind of freshen it up. I made the mistake of putting them all down at once and it was working pretty well. <laughs> I was shredding it up pretty good. I think I just overestimate the abilities of a disposal and I think I jammed it. But luckily, not luckily, but I have been through this before, semi-recently, and it got jammed, we didn't know what to do, we kind of just forgot about it, and then the next day, I took matters into my own hands, and I investigated, and hopefully, my tricks that I did before will work again. And if you've never been in this situation, maybe this will help you, but it's nothing fancy, it's nothing like a plumber would do, so don't be scared. If I can do it, you can do it. Hopefully this works. <laughs> okay, hopefully now that we're all here, I won't do this wrong, but... The first thing I did was unplug it. And then we have this little hex key that we taped to the outside of the disposal. I totally just broke the tape, but this thing is meant to go underneath. Let me get this out of the way. There is a little spot underneath here 
I don't know if all disposals look the same, but this is what ours is like. And that fits in there. And you can manually move the crank. And if something is stuck in the blades, this can help loosen it. And the last time I did this, it was much harder to turn. So I'm kind of thinking maybe it's not the same kind of issue because before it was really tough for me to move it and I kept having to do it over and over again. The other thing that I did is there's a reset button under here. I hit that. Welcome to our dirty dishes. And we're back. Oops. I was just trying to show off my skills to Grant. He's not happy. Because <laughs> we're putting bricks down there. Grant. There's the hex. But now you know how to fix it, thanks to me, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> That's the bright side. That's the bright side. <laughs> Always look on the bright side of life. Why not? Right. Can I leave you down here unsupervised? <laughs> All right. I got you set up on a window seal. I'm sitting by the bed. This feels like old school YouTube. I feel like I'm time traveling. We really did not have anything planned for 4th of July. I feel like that goes without saying. I'm looking on Instagram. I feel like a lot of people are doing a lot of things for 4th of July. I'm very jealous. I wish we could be doing something. I wish we could be at the beach. I wish we could be at a pool. I wish we could be on vacation taking a trip for our anniversary which was on tuesday really looking forward to that but i mean it's just it's just sad but if you haven't heard texas is not doing well texas is doing real bad dallas is doing really bad specifically we're in dallas county houston is doing really bad in reference to covid and this isn't really in response to that because i made these orders over a week ago i made one of these orders like two, three months ago. I had paper masks that I had just been reusing. I'm not sure if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's what I'd been doing. And I haven't really been going out a lot anyway, but I finally got some cloth masks that I could wash and reuse. So I'm gonna show you the masks that I got because I think they're all really cute. And actually I haven't opened one of the bags that just came that I'm very, very excited about. Probably I'm the only one that's gonna be excited about it. But before I do that, I just wanna say, and I know I might lose some of you guys on this but this is just how I feel I don't feel like wearing a mask is like a political statement I don't think it should be a political thing at all to me wearing a mask is like the nice thing to do for your community or for your neighbor so you don't know everybody you don't know everybody you're around you don't know their life circumstance they could be out getting groceries but at home they're taking care of a sick relative or an elderly parent or something like that and it's just there's just a lot that we don't know when we go out and I know we're all trying our best to social distance and everything like that and I really hesitate to tell anybody what to do I don't think that's my job but I don't know it just I, it just feels important for me to say I feel like wearing a mask is the nice thing to do for your community and it does come down to personal responsibility and there are cute masks out there so that's what I'm here to show you I'm sorry if you didn't want to hear that but it's just what I feel like I have to say right now obviously I could go on and on about that but I won't I'll spare you because I'm sure a lot of you guys are on the same page with me. Wearing a mask is not the end of the world and it can actually be really cute. These are from ASOS. They had a bunch of different options. I got this kind of aqua floral one. I got a black and white floral one and then a blue toned floral one. And these all have the ties. And I probably should have checked, but this set right here, these three all came in a pack together. These actually don't have the nose bridge wire where you can mold it to your nose, which I would rather have that because I think it gives you a better fit. I like it. Okay, now the next set, I also got these from ASOS. We have a pink floral one, and these are actual elastic bands that go around your ears so they're a little bit easier and they also have the wire on the nose bridge so they fit a little bit better Ooh, i think this one is my favorite from both of the sets from asos it's a black background with kind of like wildflowers oh yeah this one is really really cute and then the last one from that set is just kind of like a olive green. Not actually my favorite, but I like the other two so much and it came in the set, so 
why not? Okay, and the reason why I ordered these from ASOS is because these were taking so long to come. I think that Disney released these masks for pre-order like at least two months ago. And I hopped on and ordered a set and they took even longer than they were supposed to to come and I haven't opened them yet. I mean, I know Disney masks aren't for everyone, but I don't know about you, but I've been very into happy content on the internet, especially lately. I mean, I always consume Disney content, Disney podcasts, Disney videos, like pretty much every day. Um, and I've talked about this in a recent favorites video. I haven't really been as into true crime podcasts and I don't know what it is. I mean, I've definitely had my eye more on the news, especially through this shutdown period, because there's a lot we all need to know on a daily basis to see how things are going. But some of that time where I would usually be listening to true crime podcasts have been replaced with Disney content. <laughs> I don't know why it is my happy place. I just love it. You guys know I would absolutely love to be going to Disney World right now But I don't think that's really a smart decision. All this is cute. Okay, this one might be the new favorite I think this one is really cute. I think the pack that I got is just Mickey and Minnie. I'm not sure this one is Minnie they come in different sizes. I think they have small, medium, large. Never mind. Don't quote me. I'll put a link if I can find it if they're not sold out. Very cute. And then we have another Minnie Mouse one. This is perfect for what I'm wearing. And then the last one is navy blue and white Mickeys. All right, so now that I've gotten makeup all over all of my masks, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed my little mask try-on. It's a very different try-on haul for me. I'm glad I have all these new masks. I'm definitely gonna be putting them to use with my doctor's appointments. I'm gonna go into the fertility clinic three times this week coming up. And I know nobody really wants to be wearing a mask right now. Nobody wants to be in this situation, but it's just the reality that we're living in right now. And why not make it cute, you know? This is normal. Okay, our one home project for the day is gonna be putting together this outdoor furniture. Where did we get this, Wayfair? Or was it all modern? Overstock. Overstock, so all of those kind of blend together to me. We got two chairs and a little table that goes in between. Basically, when we were looking for outdoor stuff, and I've been kind of looking on and off at Target, a bunch of different places, because I just didn't want to spend a lot of money because inevitably it breaks down, it's out in the weather, and I just don't want to deal with that, especially if I spent a lot of money on it. Um, I love the look of outdoor furniture with cushions, but who has the time in their life to run out and grab your cushions when it starts raining? I don't want to spend my life like that. It's just too stressful and too ridiculous. Plus, I don't really feel like we have anywhere to stash the cushions if we did have cushions. So this is the route we went. We're going to put these together, put them outside, and then get to grilling. So here's what we ended up with. This is the finished product, our two chairs and our little baby table. I think it's perfect for the space that we have. Actually, once we put this out here, I realized this is as much as we could handle out here on our little porch. And I love it. They're actually really, really comfortable. I'll try to find a link to them and add it to the description because from what I remember, they were really, really affordable, especially compared to other stuff, which I was really surprised by how expensive outdoor furniture is. What are you doing in here? 
We got secret stuff going on here. It's top three recipes. Uh oh. Are you making me a bloomin' onion? Basically, this is a famous grilled onion. All right, so what's the secret recipe here? So the secret recipe is <laughs> my famous- He's giving it up real quick. <laughs> grilled onion. It's famous. You take an onion. I like a sweet onion. This is a Vidalia onion. And you take the skin off and then I cut out, I cut out the core. And then you can take a bowl. You usually use like a bouillon cube, but we don't have that. So this is just- Better be than bouillon. Better than bouillon. This is the garlic I love stuff. this. Just put that in the center here. If you don't have this, you can just do a whole onion, but then you just wrap it in foil. If you have a heavy duty foil, it's good too. But then what you do is you just put this on the grill from like what, the time you start preheating it, and you just leave it alone. You just stick it in the corner. For about how long? However long it takes to cook. The longer mm -hmm. the better. And we've also got three colors of bell peppers. I love peppers with my fajitas. And I think that we're just gonna put these in a grill bag. I just caught Grant doing something to the onion, and it really is his secret recipe because he wasn't gonna tell you guys. Put a little butter in there. He added a little chunk of butter in there, and he wasn't gonna tell me or you. We won't forget about this. You're gonna put a little better than bouillon in there too. Yeah. And this is the garlic kind. This is the garlic kind. Yeah. We have the beef, the chicken. I think we have vegetable. I don't know. We have a bunch of different varieties of this better than bouillon. I feel like everybody's caught on to this stuff, but it is so good if you've never tried it. All right, we got all our stuff in off the grill. Let's see. Ooh. All right, it's looking good. A little taste test? Uh-oh. There you go. Uh-oh. I'm gonna try mine. Mmm! Ooh, that's good. All right, so while Grant works on that, I'm gonna answer a question I've gotten a bunch of times really quick. So many people have asked how we're eating tacos and fajitas and all this stuff when we're low carb because of the tortillas. Well, we have two different brands of low carb tortillas or like carb conscious tortillas because they still have carbs, but they have less carbs the Mission Carb Balance, and these have three net carbs each. These are a smaller tortilla. And then the other brand that we like, and we get both of these from Walmart, and these are the Carb Counter Whole Wheat Wraps. These are five net carbs per serving, and these are a bigger tortilla. I like both of them. I think I like the Mission Tortillas a little bit better, but I think they're both good. They're pretty close to regular tortillas. They're not exactly the same, but they totally work for me. And I love tacos and fajitas and anything wrapped in a tortilla. This is gonna be a really full fajita. First bite, let's see, are these gonna be like Lupe tortilla? Very good, so good. It's not exactly like Lupe tortilla. It's definitely the closest I've ever had to the real thing and it's really, really good. So I definitely suggest it, but now I'm gonna eat it. All right, I'd like to introduce you to the basket of IVF medicine. We have a ton of shots, syringes, medications of all kinds. And right now we're getting set up to do our two evening shots. Last night was our first day doing IVF shots. We're doing full stem and Minipure right now. And I'm also taking Letrozole. I already took that. And then we've got two more shots. Last night was our first night doing these shots. And of course I was kind of nervous, but of course I'm excited to finally be getting on to the egg stimulation portion of IVF. I did the whole prep month. I'm finally off my birth control. I'm still taking the metformin and then we're adding on these shots and also the letrozole. And it wasn't that bad last night, of course. The, the shots are really quick. The needles are really tiny and Grant actually did my shot. You guys had questions before whenever I did my trigger shot with the last IUI I actually did the shot for whatever reason it just felt better to be in control of it But last night Grant did both of my shots and obviously he did a really good job They're kind of complicated. They're definitely more complicated than the trigger shot that I did before uh, You have to like kind of like mix and powder with a liquid and yesterday we had to like load up the Falsam pen and everything if you've been through it, you know I mean, it's not like rocket science or anything, but we're about to do it. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to show getting injections or doing shots on YouTube, so we're not gonna show you that. Plus, who really wants to see that? But that's what we're about to do right now. 
I, I'm not used to it yet, for sure, but we're gonna do it. Dr. Grant. Dr. Grant, all right. Doing a house call. We'll see them guts. Oh no. <laughs> It's so weird that we're just allowed to do this medical experiment at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so glad you prepared for this moment. Yeah.